Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we're going to be taking a look at the new i12 TWS Blue Label Edition. Keep watching to find out more. So 24 hours have passed and there's a new AirPod clone on the market claiming to take the throne. So are they going to? Now these are an updated version or a newer version of the original i12 TWS, the red label edition, which from my previous reviews you would have noticed and I actually did find them to be a very, very worthy contender for the king of the crop. There are other models out, the LK TE8, which is also very good. There's a TE9 coming out and there's also other models available. All of them are very good and all of them are still really trying to compete with the i10 TWS, which for me was the original and the best, albeit with some flaws. So let's take a look at these and see if some of those flaws have been remedied and see what's changed, see what's new and see how they compare. So first of all, with the packaging, the packaging itself is slightly different from the original. Uh, the box itself is a little bit bigger and obviously the picture on the front is different. We've now in these, we've got colored editions. So you've got options for white, black, gray, green and red. We're still using the same technology. So essentially they are the same, still using the lightning connector to connect and charge. So if you're using an iOS device, you're still going to be absolutely fine with that. For those that are on Android or USB type C, it's unfortunate to see this, but I think these really are truly aimed at Apple users rather than iOS. So let's go through some of the other things on the box. So we've got uh, TWS True Wireless Stereo i12, auto power on, auto pairing, and they're using Bluetooth 5.0. Now it says on the back, uh, product name, wireless earphone, version 5.0 EDR BLE. So that's the enhanced data rate for the Bluetooth. The input is five volts, 2.4 amps. So they've actually uprated the charging capability of these Previous models wouldn't take quite a high as an amperage as that, so hopefully the battery is going to charge a bit quicker. They have stated that the battery for the actual um, case itself can be charged in anywhere between 40 minutes to an hour, which is a little bit faster than previously. And the talking time is uh, between two to three hours. Now, when they say talking time, I think that's wrong. I think what they mean is playback time. So music playback time is about two to three hours. Talking time, from what I can gather from these, from what I've used already, and I have actually tried these out, so I do have some sort of experience of how well they last. Um, talk time on the phone, about three and a half hours. Actually listening to music, anywhere between two and a half to three hours, depending on your volume. At higher volumes and with greater distances for the Bluetooth, etc., you're gonna run the battery down a little bit quicker. If you've got your Bluetooth device right next to you and you're on slightly lesser volume, you're gonna get a lot more uh, mileage out of them, maybe more than three hours. Maybe enough for the new Avengers Endgame movie. Who knows? Anyway, I've waffled on far too much. Let's take these things out of the box and see what we actually get for the money. So we get our user guide, the i12 manual, which is both in English and Chinese. There are the AirPods themselves. So that's the charging box in the matte black finish. It's actually like a rubberized finish. Again, very similar to the i88s we've reviewed recently. And it seems to be getting a more popular thing now, having these actually coming out in newer color options. Uh, at the moment, still with AirPods 2, the originals, we're still on the gloss white. There does seem to be a growing trend that they will actually be coming out in newer colors very shortly. So if you're looking for an exact one-for-one -one copy of your AirPods at the moment, then still we're on the gloss white, but these could well fit the bill in the future. So let's go through the uh, actual charging box itself. So on the bottom, we've got our lightning port connector for charging. There's a push button to initiate the charging mechanism for the pods. One press to turn on, one press to turn off, usual kind of deal. When you do press the button, a blue light comes on to say it's charging. Press the button again and the blue light will go off to stop the charging. Now the actual case itself, again, very similar deal to previous models. We've got the nice silver chrome accent on the back on the hinge flap, and you've got the usual kind of magnetic clamp or clasp which holds it all together and the pods themselves are magnetic so they're not going to fall out keeps them nice and secure and also helps it to charge properly by keeping it really snug and secure so let's take a look at the actual pods themselves so the pods themselves when you take them out of the box after you've initially set them up they will go into the uh online mode that automatically power on so they're they are now ready to be used as you probably see from the uh, the footage 
These are very similar to the original AirPods where you've got the dot on the outside, you've also got the dot on the inside, and they do look and feel very, very similar to the original AirPods, even down to things like the left and right being marked on the bottom, which is a very common on AirPods, the original ones. Going down to the base of them, we've got the usual two-prong affair, so there's a metal base with two recessed copper contacts for charging for your plus and minus. Again, I like these being recessed because as you use them, take them in and out of your ears, the base of it will actually get greasy. And with the older models, that used to be a problem causing issues with charging because of connectivity and all that kind of stuff. Now these being in a matte black actually makes them slightly more difficult to keep clean in my opinion. Because it's a matte finish, when you put them in your ears because of obviously um, sweat and earwax and all that kind of stuff, they do leave a kind of a shiny residue. So you are gonna have to try and keep these a little bit cleaner than maybe the gloss white ones, which were a little bit easier to keep clean, or they were less noticeable when they got greasy because of that gloss effect. So these are again controlled in the same way. They're touch sensitive. So um, I'll put them in my ears and I'll demonstrate what the touch sensors are like. So if you press and hold on both, after a few seconds, you'll get the power off message if they're on. And when they're in the off setting, if you press and hold them again for like five seconds or so, you get the power on message in both and you get the pairing sequence started to be initialized and then one of the AirPods will say connected. So let's, I'll put some music on my uh, phone here. So we've got the Surfer Music Streaming app, which you can uh, check out more about actually from the links up here. I'll go through now and I'll show you what the individual settings do. So if you press on either side, just one press, that will pause the music and to resume, you can press either side and it'll go back into your music and start playing. That works the same for music, calls, all that kind of stuff. So if you've got an incoming call, just one tap will answer the call. Tap again and that will end the call. Pretty much the usual deal for these. If you press the left twice, that will reduce the volume. If you press the right one twice, it will increase the volume. And if you press the left side three times, it will go backwards a track. And if you press the right side three times, it'll go forward a track. So that's going back a track and if you wanna go forward, And if you want to bring up your assistant, be it Siri or your Android assistant, or if you press and hold briefly until you hear the bleep, and then it comes up with your Android assistant or Siri or Bixby or whichever it may be. So sound quality wise, the sound quality I would say is pretty much identical to the uh, i12 TWS, the originals. And again, as we said previously, the i10 TWS is still the one to beat for all round sound quality. Where these make up on the Bluetooth, now the Bluetooth actually on these, if I quickly go onto Bluetooth, the Bluetooth is actually brilliant. I was out earlier in the garden walking around and there were no dropouts whatsoever, which is actually a unusual thing. You generally find with these Bluetooth devices, especially if you're streaming as well, because you're using the phone's Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth at the same time, that can sometimes be a recipe for disaster and give you dropouts because both radios are communicating at the same time and it can cause issues. But these have had no problems whatsoever and have been absolutely fantastic. And actually, if I do the uh, the quick test, so if I put them back in, power them back on, and I'll do my cup test. So what I generally tend to do on these uh, earpods and AirPods is to play a song. So we're gonna play in, and what I do is cup, literally cut my ears with my hands. So that will give you an idea of how strong the Wi-Fi signal is. So no, absolutely fine. No, they're absolutely brilliant. I'll stop that again. So, again, excellent sounding quality. Not quite as good as the i10 TWS. I would say they're identical to the original i12 TWS, but they're not quite as good as the i10s, unfortunately, which is a shame because, again, these things should be evolving. We're getting better things like the charging's better, the battery life is better, but unfortunately we're not quite getting that audio quality quite up there. I have actually tested this earlier, I made a phone call and I've recorded the phone call on my phone, so I'll play that back for you now. This is a sound test of the i12 TWS Blue version, sound recorded in the house. There is a washing machine in the background and also a ticking clock if you can pick it up. Hopefully noise cancelling is uh, getting rid of some of that. But, uh, 
we'll see what happens in the recording. Don't forget, if you want to win these i12 TWS blue version, just uh, put a funny comment in the comment section below and you'll be in the draw to win. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. So as you probably agree, it's not the greatest of sound quality when you're on a telephone call, but essentially I don't think really telephone calls these days are most people's priority. Most of it comes down to usability and sound quality. Those I think really are main two criteria with these types of devices. So let's quickly go back to the instruction manual and go through some of the specifications. So uh, Bluetooth is uh, Bluetooth range is 10 to 15 meters, which I can agree with in the garden. I went a good 30, 40 feet out in the garden, and no problems at all. Each earbud has a 30 milliamp hour rechargeable battery, and the actual case itself is a 300 milliamp hour battery. So you can do the math yourself. So uh, 60 milliamp hours for the two. So you should get roughly about a maximum of five charges out of the uh, box from a full charge. It does actually say in here, I did notice a bit earlier on, that it does actually refer to it as being a 35 milliamp hour battery in them. So that would take it to 70, so that would reduce it down to probably four charges, four and a bit. Um, again, it's not entirely clear on there. I find at the moment that I've got at least three to four full charges out of them under general use. Again, mm -hmm. it's a shame that these haven't got some way of actually monitoring the battery level of the case itself. Apart from it being fully charged or completely flat, there's no real way of telling what's in between, which is uh, an unfortunate thing because the previous models, like the i10 TWS and others, have done really well in that regard with battery level monitors or flashing LEDs. This LED, unfortunately, is either on or it's off. So there's not a great deal of uh, information to come from that. Although saying that in the actual app itself, or when you're using the AirPods, it will tell you in your Bluetooth settings how much power is in the AirPods themselves. But again, unfortunately, doesn't tell you how much is in the case. So overall, in summary, what do I think? I think these are a accurate representation of the price they're being charged. Now that sounds a little bit uh, obscure, I'll explain. Now at the moment, the original red label i12 TWS actually sells for slightly more, only a couple of dollars, but a couple of dollars more than the i12 TWS. And also the i10 TWS actually sells for a few dollars more again which again reflects the quality. So the i10 being pretty much the one to beat is the more expensive. Now I did notice there is another one, which I will be reviewing very shortly, the XY pods, which are a little bit more expensive again. And they've got the added feature of the W1 chip, which gives you the pop-up animation on Android, uh, on Apple phones, that kind of thing. So we'll be checking those out and see if they are actually worth the increase in price. But at the moment, like I said, I think the, the blue label i12 TWS is reflected well in the price. They're not quite as good as the i12 red label, in my opinion, purely because of the, the kind of the battery level thing. Sound quality is fantastic. The Bluetooth is actually a little bit better, but there's little quirks such as the, the charging setup where it's not entirely 100% sure what is going on. The auto charging almost seems to be kind of confused by the fact that the pods are actually on so if you've turned them on manually and you try to put them on charge weird things happen that you're not always entirely sure that they are going to charge or if they're charging or if they're turned off so for me that is a little bit of a negative but having said that the bluetooth is absolutely fantastic possibly the best i've used so far which is saying something because the bluetooth on these haven't been brilliant at times Essentially, it's down to you. What are your priorities? If your priorities are Bluetooth connectivity and sound quality, then the Blue Label i12 TWS are definitely the way to go. If ease of use, simplicity, and sound quality are a consideration, then the Red Label ones are probably the ones to go for. Um, if you're looking for just all out sound, then I would say we're stuck with the i10 TWS or possibly the XY pods after I've reviewed them. So hopefully I haven't confused you too much. If you've got any comments or questions, feel free to stick them in the section below. But in the meantime, I'll be Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and we'll catch you in the very next AirPod review. Thanks for watching.